Hello everyone and welcome back for another Superman trade paperback look. This time I have the newly released, or reissued I should say, reprinted, Superman Blue, that is volume one. Uh, this is a trade paperback that collects basically so far the core storyline of what would ultimately become known as the Electro Blue Superman or the Superman Blue or uh, Electric Superman. It has different nicknames for it. Uh, this is a story that took place uh, for DC Comics in the late 1990s and I actually remembered the story. I was in high school, middle school, high school at the time um, and it shook a lot of it shook a lot of people up. Um, this was just maybe four or five years after the death of Superman and um, there were some other serious uh, storylines along the way like uh, I believe they had the Bizarro World slash Fall of Metropolis thing. And then we had that led into the Dead Again and Zero Hour. And then, of course, the death of Clark Kent. And then followed by later on, it was the, um, the trial of Superman, Superman. And then, of course, the final night. Then the marriage uh, of Lois and Clark, uh, which coincided with the TV show, Lois and Clark. And then after that, uh, it kind of went into what was called the power struggle, which ultimately led into this. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time that this stuff has been reprinted in several years. Um, about, I don't know, a long time ago, maybe a few years ago, not a few years ago, but at least like 10 or 15 years ago, there was another trade paperback that came out that only contained the core storyline and here it is there um this is superman transformed and this is the new version um but as you can see the new version is significantly thicker and contains far more material um compared to this but uh there is one thing that this has that this does not have uh and vice versa but i'll, I'll get to that in a second um but yeah, this was a storyline that was out in the late 1990s and it caused a lot of havoc, made headlines, that sort of thing. And basically the idea was that after the final night, Superman lost his powers, um, you know, and when the sun was finally reignited by Hal Jordan, uh, his powers never came back. So ultimately through some other various means of getting help from the Legion of Superheroes, among other things, uh, he finally got thrown into the sun and his powers kind of kick-started, but as a result of the overload and all that kind of stuff, uh, he accumulated too much energy. And very shortly after his powers came back, uh, he started noticing signs that something was very wrong. And that ultimately led to this. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, the Superman blue thing lasted for, this wasn't something that lasted for like a month or two. This thing lasted for at least a year. As for, or several months, I, I could be wrong in my timeline, but this lasted more than just a couple of weeks. This lasted quite a while. And uh, this whole thing would run for a while and would ultimately lead into the whole um, Superman Red, Superman Blue special that came out later in that time. And then, then there was the whole Millennium Giants thing, which ultimately turned out that the reason why the Millennium Giants appeared in the first place was because Superman's energy was split in two and it upset the natural balance of the universe or something like that, if I can remember correctly. And then finally, in one final act of what would be, thought would be self-sacrifice, uh, you know, the two Superman joined together, crash landed on Earth, and were back to their normal Kryptonian classic red, red and blue yellow suit uh, that fans know and love. And that would not happen until Superman Forever. And that pretty much marked the end uh, of the of this era, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is one of the last storylines for this entire super team. And uh, yeah, so let me just show you what's inside real quick. As you can see, there's a nice image here on the cover. Of course, art by Dan Jurgens and Joe Rubenstein. It's a fantastic image uh, with Superman kind of hovering and with electricity uh, things kind of coming out of him. Now this was 
this image is the same image that was on Superman 123, 123, and uh, on the standard edition cover. Um, and if I can find it back here, I will show you. Oh, here it is. I think it's right, hold on. It's right, close, 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 close. No, that's right. Still not there, bear with me, folks. Okay, it's right here. So this is the same image that's pretty much on the cover, just enlarged with different coloring. So yeah, this was the standard, I guess, edition of that issue. And then of course, there was a special edition that came out also that had a, a variant cover or whatever that had a more glow in the dark feel. And uh, so yeah. But yeah, uh, the thing about this that I noticed is that as awesome as this book is, it miss, it's missing some what I think to be some core material. Now, it starts off, it gets right into it. With him, you know, he has his classic suit on. He's This is after he got his powers back. And then slowly but surely, you start seeing little things happen like here, and then electricity and all that stuff. And then bullets kind of pass through him. And then, you know, he tries to find out why he gets sucked into a bottled city of Kandor, which is not the Kryptonian city, but a, di a different city. And um, all those other various things phased him into a state of flux, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then as the story progresses, he's starting to lose his form and becomes an energy being. And then a new suit is created in order to contain all of that electric essence. Um, but, so yeah, this thing jumps right into it. But the old trade from several years ago actually gives you the, kind of the prehistory, the pre-story before that. And uh, just to show you really quick, unlike this, this contains the whole, uh, the power struggle. Now, I think that was kind of a blunder on DC's part not to put some of that in here because this kind of gives you the, the whole backstory of how this all started, even though they refer to it in here, but uh, it's a whole lot different than actually including the story. Um, pretty much in this trade, you know, you have Superman standing around trying to get his powers back. He's still powerless after the final night and the wedding. And of course, you know, various heroes come together to try to help him, help him out, especially the Legion. And um, ultimately, they use other various means and they don't work. And then they throw them into the sun, which was later on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they kind of throw them into the sun. And then he gets his powers back right about here. And because of that, he was overloaded, yada, yada, yada. He's now him with his old self again. And then things start going wrong and it all starts leading to, uh, to this. Now, this issue is actually, this issue is actually where this trade begins. So all of this is not in here. And I, it's kind of a disappointment because it should have been, and I thought it was until I just happened to notice it just a little while ago. And to think that I almost got rid of this trade, almost gave it away. Uh, I'm glad I didn't because it contains that other, this whole, right here in my left hand, this whole part of the storyline uh, that is kind of crucial, I think. Um, but for the most part, everything else here is in here. And um, to be fair, not only does it contain the rest of the Electro stuff, you know, transition period stuff, but it also contains like the first few run of issues after the power change and the suit change. So this is where he gets the suit in uh, Superman 123. And then, right? And that's where this trade ends. The old trade that is. The old trade ends right here. And that's pretty much it for this. But on the new one, things are just getting started. And you have all of this left. And uh, 
it just goes right on. It gets right into it. And then it goes on for a few more months. And there's like an annual or two in here as well. And um, yeah, so it's nice to actually see all of that in here. And I'm happy about that. And the artwork is of course fantastic. The writing was great at the time, even though it was controversial. Um, you know, the reprint looks great. And they really did a good job with that, I have to say. And um, everything kind of pops out, looks good. No, it doesn't, I don't have any errors or mistakes or anything, any missing pages, that sort of thing. Um, and then what I do like about this trade is that before each issue or each next chapter in the storyline, you get the cover of what the issue was like this. Uh, whereas the old one didn't really do that. It just put them all in the back, uh, whatever contained as a cover gallery. Um, so that was kind of nice that they did that here. And then, of course, in the very back of the book, there is like an, kind of like an, after, an afterword by Dan Jurgens himself. And it talks about their thought process and what they were thinking of and how they came up with the whole idea of doing this in the first place. So you got two pages of that, May 2018. And then the book gives you kind of uh, like, I guess, sketches of Scorn or I think that's his name, right? Or his actual alien name is Sir Attack, but he ultimately became known as Scorn. And uh, so that's kind of cool to see that in here. And then you get the variant cover for 123 in there and then all the various DC advertisements, and that's it. Um, for those wondering, uh, this trade contains, collects Superman 122 to 125, Action Comics 732 to 734, the Adventures of Superman 545 to 547, Superman the Man of Steel 67 through 69, and finally Superman Annual number 9. Uh, so yeah, so apparently according to this, there's going to be a few more volumes. It says the first of four volumes features some of comics' greatest talents. So there you have it. This is the first volume of it. Pretty thick, awesome. Got the nice spine there with the... Uh, the Electro Superman font there, which I always kind of liked. And um, volume one, and I uh, got the creative team down there. And this thing will set you back about $25. Or if you're in Canada, it's $33.99 Canadian dollars or whatever they use. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth picking up. If you're a Superman fan, it's worth it. I also have to want to point out that if you happen to have this trade, keep it. Keep it. Because, as I mentioned earlier, the pre-story before the main story is in here, but not here. So, I'm glad I decided to keep it. I'm glad I kept it long enough to realize uh, that the storyline was missing something. But overall, this is a fantastic book. And it's only volume one. I can't wait to see what they do for the other remaining two or three. And uh, this promises to be very exciting. Uh, I've read it already. I've read it years ago. And I kind of just flipped through it uh, just to see how everything is. And it really came out rather good. Um, what was kind of fun about this whole thing is that it kind of added a whole other twist to the Clark Kent secret identity thing. Because when he's in this form as Superman... I mean, he kind of has, he's an energy being in a suit, right? Like literally covered from head to toe. But then he can kind of like phase himself or or like Electro phase himself out or something and phase back into Clark Kent. But the Clark Kent or his alter ego Clark Kent is more human or is human, which means if he's Clark Kent and gets hurt, he actually gets hurt. So Kryptonite is kind of rendered invalid here for a while, but uh, he can get hurt by any normal means unless he phases into the Superman. So it was cool. I really enjoyed it at the time and I have a lot of fond memories of this era. Um, I've always said, anybody who knows me well enough knows that I've always said that the, uh, the 90s era for Superman was my favorite 
And of course, it is the era in Superman comics that I grew up reading, uh, starting with the John Byrne all the way up until, you know, I guess Infinite Crisis is, but as far as I remember, right after this whole Electro Superman thing happened, and after it was finally all resolved in Superman Forever, uh, that kind of marked the end uh, for the most part of the 90s era. And then there were a bunch of other artists and writers that came on the books and then it ultimately turned into uh, the whole Dominus storyline. And, and Dan Jurgens and Scott Eaton and um, you know, a few of the other ones, a few of the other artists stuck around and Stuart Emmerman a lot of those guys and gals stuck around uh, and contributed to that storyline, but then they all went their separate ways by the time the new millennium came around. And then that marked the whole, what I call the Jeff Loeb era. Uh, so yeah, it was fun. And uh, I would definitely go and pick this up, find it at your local comic shop. And of course, any uh, book retail places like Barnes and Noble or whatnot. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching this little video about this, about Superman Blue. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a very good day. It is hot and, well, it is a warm, sunny day here in Southern California. And uh, until next time, up, up, and away.